Take a look behind me. The water out there in the lake is pretty normal. It's blue. Just across the street, though, this is the color of that water. It's almost a neon orange. This is a sample we took just a little while ago. Just across the street, there's a dental facility that's been shut down. They are going to have to reschedule all of their patients. Part of Saratoga is still blocked off this evening, so it is best to avoid the area altogether. As you can see, that flame is still burning pretty strong this afternoon. So we did also speak with some people who live just right next door to where this explosion happened. In fact, that's their home there on fire right now. We'll hear from them a, a little later. The woman uh, who lives there actually was up early for a turtle release, and she's very grateful that that was the case because that allowed her to really escape quickly. Her grandson was in a room right by where this explosion happened. He actually had debris fall on him. That's what woke him up this wow. morning. Flu season is still going strong. It can spread easily, and now there's a new tool to fight against the flu. There are about 80 guys working out here right now. About half of those are from the coastal bend, and the plan is to hire even more before this job is complete. There's world leaders like President Obama and German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Now, these world figures are made in a small workshop. They're available all year long, but of course, they're especially popular during the Christmas season. <laughs> what else to give but a Christmas pooper? Oh, I didn't get goodness. you one. Well, I want to. Sorry. Here, he wants a specialized Christmas <laughs> exactly. pooper. A customized one for Matthew here. Know, I, it could be me, the celebrity <laughs> on it, I suppose, or you. It's yeah, I don't want to be <laughs> featured in a pooper, Matt. Uh, he now says we won't get that because we've twisted the facts in our coverage. I, I mean, in fairness, I don't think it was twisted, but if there's something you think I've left out, can you tell me what it was? No, I don't even want to talk to you anymore. It's just like you're evil. All the white markings you see on this home out here tonight do represent bullet holes. So as you can see, this gunman did fire dozens of shots. The memorial out here tonight is continuing to grow. We've seen several people, as you see right now, stopping by. Many of them don't even know these children just to pay their respects. We are told by family members that this is six-year-old Nevaeh's home. I have the pepper spray. And the stun gun, not the wasp spray yet. <laughs> That's like the big trifecta of repellents. I might consider Matt's that. making a ruckus over there. <laughs> Add it to the list. Time to go online and take a look at what's trending this morning. On Yahoo, it's Forrest Whitaker. The Oscar winning actor was accused of shoplifting at a New York City deli employee, even frisked him last Friday. They didn't hit him with wasp spray. Yeah, that's good. They didn't yeah. have any, probably. Jen, as you can see, there are several police officers still out here right now. This home right here on the corner of Larkspur and Trojan is blocked off. We're told by police officers here on the scene that it is a homeowner, a man in his 70s, that is in custody. At this point in time. Now, this initially came in, according to officers here on the scene, as a disturbance call, potentially disturbance between a man and his son. Police have verified that two people were shot out here one person in the arm, one person in the leg. It's not clear yet just who that was, but police on the scene tell me that one is potentially a family member related to the homeowner that's in custody now here on Larkspur. The other, they're not sure if that's a family member or if that was just a passerby. Just so you know where we are, Jen, we are here on the corner of Trojan and Larkspur, just a few blocks away from Moody High School. In fact, when we got here, the school zone lights were still going. There were several kids still walking in the neighborhood, and uh, police had not yet taken this man into custody. We actually watched as they uh, had their guns drawn and were able to get him into cuffs right here uh, in front of this home where police officers tell us this man lives. Uh, right now, we're watching police go door to door. They're still trying to gather the details and get information on this shooting. We're not sure uh, the two people who were shot, police are on their way to the hospital right now to see what condition they're in. So we showed the video to CCISD administration who says the teacher's actions are inappropriate by district standards. But this is definitely something that we are going to look into. This is not any type of behavior that we would condone. Hidden video inside a pre-K-3 classroom brought some in this room full of parents to tears. You know, it's not just the actions where she physically grabs the children and points at them. It's her face, it's her tone, and kids notice that. Some parents say watching as their children get yelled at or roughly touched is difficult enough, but it's all the more frustrating because they had complained about this teacher before. In February, one mother sent this email to the teacher saying, quote, 
A four-year-old should not tell me he hates school. She goes on to say her son is isolated and belittled in class. She says these emails led to no action. Others say they filed complaints last year when their older children were in this same classroom. He's like, my teacher spanked me. And I was like, what do you mean your teacher spanked you? He's like, she spanked my hand. And I was like, oh, she didn't show do that. Her son did not want to go back to class. This year, her daughter is a little girl in purple seen sitting here when the teacher appears to swat toward her face. In another video, the teacher grabs her by the arm. Her parents say they have no doubt the complaints they launched about their son should have been taken more seriously. And now we believe it because that's our daughter that she's grabbing and yelling in her face. The parents tell us they complained to the principal yesterday. She referred us to the district. Do you know where the administration building is? Today, she did not return our call or email, but CCISD has suspended the teacher with pay during their investigation. The early childhood development staff have told these parents this teacher will not return to class this year. Janine Reyes, Chris 6 News. Will you call us Thursday to let us know? Yeah, give me your number. Well, it's Thursday, and Costa still doesn't have that money, and our Janine Reyes didn't get that phone call. She's with us here in the studio now with the latest on this story. Janine. Well, we tried tracking down Fritch today, but only got him to respond to text messages. He now says the check will be presented to Casa on Monday, but we still have no idea how much they raised, how much he's donating, or even how many walkers exactly that event had. Also, neither do committee members for that zombie walk. And there's nothing shady about it, and I, I feel bad. I really wish there was, I had, you know, a full-time committee. I should have like four or five people in here running this operation. He told us he was a one-man army, doing it all on his own. But tell that to Corpus Christi Zombie Walk committee member Laura Lelaney Rock. There was a committee. It consisted of, there was five of us total. She says Fritch left the committee in the dark, not providing them with a budget, attendance numbers, or t-shirt sales and other sources of revenue. Rock has organized similar events and says she can only estimate the amount of costs at $10,000 or so. And with the support of CASA of the Coastal Bend, donations were in the thousands. There was a, you know, there was a lot of in-kind and there was a lot of sponsors that were involved and media sponsors and I think that's where people where they would be a little upset. In fact the zombie walk came on our noon show because of their affiliation with CASA. I own Texas Toy so it's just right. been a yeah that's where we sell the actual tickets for the walk and that's kind of the foundation for the walk of how we started this whole thing. The whole thing is now an unknown. In text messages with Dean today he could not tell us how many walkers participated, how much the event costs or how much it raised. Monday, he said the check would be two to three thousand dollars, and as not only a committee member but also a sponsor, Rock says that's disappointing. She contributed cash and paid for the DJ and photo booth as donations for this event. I may as well have just wrote the check to Casa. You gave twenty five hundred. Yeah, and and get rid of the stress that I had of the planning stages. Now, Fritch feels we have gone out of our way to make him look bad. We did, by the way, invite him to speak with us in person today. We also called him and visited his work and warehouse. But as we mentioned, texting was the only contact we were able to make with him. Dave does work out. Um, and he's got a new workout craze he's been working on. Uh, snake handling. No, not yeah. snake handling. I, I, I don't I'm, really I'm get to that. Yeah. 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 And he had no yeah. idea what was coming up. I, I, I had to come up every year on his birthday. I'm, my brain's <laughs> jogging. What can I do to him this year? And I thought, yeah. he's so into that prancer sizing. There is nothing. There is nothing more. We've got to take another look at that. Welcome back. It's 6.32 now on your Thursday morning, February 21st. New this morning, fire crews are returning right now to a home that caught fire overnight. They're putting out more hot spots, and the high winds right now are a concern for them. The models of what Destination Bayfront could look like may look great, but there are still plenty of questions surrounding that project. Now, one council member is questioning if now is the right time for the city to use tax money on a park project. 
Councilmember Rudy Garza knows the park is a priority for the city, but other things like street repairs and user fees are higher up on his list. I think the timing right now is is poor. Council will vote on this plan next week. If approved, taxpayers will then have to approve a $41 million bond for construction to begin on the park. The Sinton School District is taking more steps to ensure the safety of its students. School officials are collecting fingerprints from students for new biometric time clocks being installed on all the school's buses. The students use their fingerprint to check on and off the buses. School district officials say only about 10% of parents opted not to have their kids in the system. That system will allow parents and school officials to go online and see if their children made it on or off the bus for school or events. This is the first system of its kind installed in Texas. It will cost the school district about $20,000 in the next three years. We have breaking news out of South Africa where Nike has suspended their contract with sprinter Oscar Pistorius. Meanwhile, he's facing day three of a bail hearing to find out if a judge will let him out of jail before his murder trial. There's new information this morning about the lead detective investigating the case. Tina Krause has the latest from London. Still months away. The lead detective also claimed police found boxes of testosterone and needles in the Paralympic champion's bedroom, but he later admitted officers read the label in the dark. The story says defense team says the substance is an herbal remedy and not steroids. I just touched on a major winter storm is hitting the Midwest today. Winter storm warnings are covering nearly all of Nebraska, Kansas, and Missouri. Forecasters expect more than a foot of snow in Kansas, with other areas picking up 9 to 12 inches. Kansas Governor Sam Brownback has closed the state government. He's urging people to stay off the streets. Many in the area are actually welcoming the snow because the Midwest has been in the middle of a severe drought. Snow also caused some big headaches in Arizona, of all places. The spring training complex in Scottsdale was blanketed by yesterday's snowstorm. That snow also led to the suspension of the World Golf Championships match play event in Tucson. Time to take a look at what's coming up later today. The man who police say killed a local Marine will be sentenced in a New Orleans court this afternoon. A jury convicted Melvin Clay of second degree murder and obstruction of justice this past December. Clay stabbed Ryan Lakowski to death in the French Quarter after he and his wife left a military ball in New Orleans in October of 2010. Clay is expected to get life in prison without the possibility of parole. The United Nations Security Council will meet to discuss North Korea. It's been just over a week since North Korea successfully conducted a nuclear test. It's the third underground nuclear test conducted by the North, but the strongest and the first since Kim Jong-un took power in December 2011. Check out these flyboards on YouTube. They're water jet packs that can be found in here in the coastal bend area as well as San Diego and Hawaii. Many people call them the dolphin jet pack. Man. Oh my goodness. Would you try one of those? You know, I might. I'm kind of daring. It looks fun. It does. I don't think you'd try one. I don't know that I would. And, and that's and it does look fun. If you do, we've got to get it on tape.